So as this finishes curing, uh, we're going to pre-weigh out some of our epoxamite. And next we'll uh, measure out some of our freeform air. So we'll be using freeform air. We'll be doing about 350 gram batches, just enough for around the flange and uh, the bottom of the core. We'll pull out the B side of the freeform air and weigh out another uh, 350 grams. Now this is different. So this is just the B component of freeform air. And the two colors allow you to see if it's really mixed. Yes. So next we'll be Weighing out some Habitat Black is another form of free form. Um, it's just a more putty consistency. When is that more useful to have that, that more putty-like consistency? So I, I use the Habitat Black to mainly fill in places like um, the ears and the nostrils and some of the low points around the eyes uh, before I actually start fiberglassing. And that will eliminate any voids? Yes. Pull out another 150 grams from the A side. So now that our second layer of gel coat's all set up, we're gonna start off by mixing up our free form Habitat Black. And so tell us what you're looking for now. So right now I'm just gonna mix it till it's one consistent color. No streaks of white and black. Just so I know it's nice and thoroughly mixed. So once that's mixed, I'm gonna add the catalyst. So we'll be adding 87 grams to our 300 batch. So what is that ratio? Can you? It's 100 to 29. Okay. And then I'm just gonna brush this out over the entire surface of the mold. So why does that go down before you plug the nose holes and the ear holes with the, the freeform putty? Um, I like to use the epoxamite as kind of a, a primer. It helps avoid any type of trapped air when I go to press it into those deep cavities. Well, I'll just take a little bit on my fingers. And press it in. And just kind of massage it into place. That way you're really pushing it deep into the cavities. So at this point, has the epoxy gel coat firmed up enough where it's actually protecting the sculpture from you damaging it as you pu push in? It is. I'm not pushing in too, too hard just because I don't want to crack the gel coat. 
or create a divot just because it is still soft. It's not fully cured. Um, but it is at that point where you can touch it without um, agitating it. A little bit on the nail sticking out of the mouth. So I notice you're running it beyond the ear holes there and onto the jawline. What what is the reason for that? So I just have a a space between the jaw and my wall that is a little deep and it putting a little bit of material there will help kind of grab onto the fiberglass and lessen the risk of an air pocket. And then I'm going to do the same thing right here. For the same exact reasons. And I'm just gonna brush some of the excess resin on top of the freeform uh, habitat just to kind of encapsulate it in the laminating resin. And you're not pulling any new out of the cup, you're just using what was already on there? Yeah, just what's settled onto the flange. So, so Eric is asking, the step you just did mm -hmm. is really primarily to fill in undercuts? Is that it? Fill in undercuts and hard to fiberglass places. Ba basically anywhere where it's going to trap air and be more difficult to um, uh, lay down your fiberglass. Right, so there um, might be some areas that are deep where your fiberglass might not conform to that divot. Exactly. And you want to make sure to like that, make that divot less Like more the shallow. nostril cavity, since right. it's vertical, it'll be really hard to get fiberglass up fiberglass, in there. Unless you're using something like chopped fiberglass. Right. Um, you can use that um, to make it a little easier as like a, a primer layer. Um, but for the for molds here, it's easier for us just to go in with a, a firmer epoxy putty and pre-fill those. Again, what you guys are seeing is a process that has been optimized for durability. So a lot of the decisions these guys are making here in Immortal Masks are so that they can get many runs out of a single mold.